So welcome to our second and final live session. I'm seated here with Carlos and Leslie and Alex Miguelis, who was just telling us about his two-month-old daughter. So a baby was born during our MOOC adventure. Um, and Henry is not with us today. He is recovering from surgery. So we wish him a very fast and speedy recovery. And if you're watching this, uh, send him good healing thoughts. Uh, Frank is behind the camera, and we're going to be joined also by Deborah Hinton, who is one of the facilitators online. We have Alan, uh, who's in Connecticut, United States. We have Clelia in Paris, I want to say, yeah. in France. And we have uh, Garzanai from Kabul, who just finished um, an exam today and is with us at 9 p.m. Uh, local time. Thank you for everyone who's joining us live from around the world and thank you for everyone who's going to watch this at some later point. So without further ado, I'm going to pass the mic on to my colleague Leslie who's going to take us through a little retrospective of what this MOOC adventure has been about. Hi Deborah. Hi Deborah. And hi everyone who's joining us or everyone who's going to look at this later. And I'll start as soon as, okay, the room. It, we're back in room 645 of the Bronfman building at the Desotel Faculty of Management. And those of you who have been following the group all the way through, you'll recognize it as the room where we did the videotaping of um, most of our sessions. And the room at that time was live with people at the tables. And now we're back. Okay, so uh, I'm going to start. I want to talk just a few minutes Hi. about our experience and our challenge, or perhaps challenges, with social learning. So where did this start? Where did this come from? We like to think that the pedagogies in a couple of our graduate master's programs, in particular the International Master's in Practicing Management, which we call the IMPM, and the International Master's for Health Leadership, which we call the IMHL, have both unique approaches to pedagogy or unique pedagogies. And they're very much embedded in social learning that takes place in the classroom much the way you saw it at the tables during the, during the group videos and much the way you engaged online in your teams. So we wanted to bring this pedagogy to the world. We wanted others to know about it and we wanted to know if it would be possible to translate these pedagogies or pedago pedagogic, pedagogical <laughs> approaches to a MOOC and to explore social learning online. So the team developed, Henry, myself, Anita, and Carlos, we decided to take on the challenge and McGill was gracious enough to allow us to do so. We wanted to focus online with groups, with experiential learning, um, with reflection, with the notion of modules, and with impact. And the impact we hope is either taking place now or will take place as a result of your initiatives. Nope. Oops. Okay. So, when we decided to go forward with bringing our pedagogy to the world, at the same time, Henry said, I'm just finishing my book. The book was in an electronic pamphlet form, but it was transitioning to a book form. And he said, let's do a MOOC based on Rebalancing Society. And since we wanted to do a group-based MOOC, we decided to call our endeavor a GROOC. I want to show you a couple of these diagrams because they sort of speak to the iterations and iterations and iterations that we had to go through because we looked at the development of this MOOC as our own social initiative. The one you see in front of you is obviously not the first go at it. It's much more sophisticated and well drawn, but the circle in front that has managing in the center and four 
slices, if you will, around it, strategizing, organizing and mobilizing, resourcing, and eventually evaluating. Those were some of our earlier uh, session titles. We've changed a number, if not all of them, somewhat. And that round circle used to have six components around the side before we developed the, the rest of this model. And we referred to that as our pizza. And as we developed it, we uh, the pizza lost two slices. And it got a center hole called managing. And we then, um, it, it morphed into a cone-shaped um, model, if you will, that Henry put together with a startup phase, which we called our initiation, the development phase, which we hoped would be central to what was going on in the group, the prototype for acceleration of the um, initiatives, which is where we think many of the groups are now or are certainly moving toward thinking about a prototype. And finally, after, and we are well aware that this will likely take place after the end of the group, especially since the group ends today, the diffusion phase, where this impact will happen, how the initiatives can be pushed out. So going forward in our planning, this became referred to, we referred to it as the pizza and the cone. These were some of our earlier um, models. So you can see we had hundreds of pieces of paper with things like this on it. And those of you who have ever seen anything Henry wrote will recognize his handwriting. Um, our model, the initial uh, stages of our model, yes, the pizza, no, the pizza, scratching out. And again, in our endless meetings um, that often lasted half or full days, we went through many, many iterations until we came up with the model we thought would represent the learning that would take place over the course of the sessions in this group. So the development of this group, we had enormous support from McGill. Um, first of all, the McGill Advisory Committee that reported to the provost that brought the idea of this MOOC forward, their acceptance of it, enormous support along the way fully from Teaching and Learning Services, uh, otherwise known around here as TLS. Um, and that support was over the two and a half plus years of development there were more than 150 people in all areas of uh, the development and the launching of the MOOC uh, that were involved. And for Gil McGill, this was probably the largest of the three MOOC investments that they have and maybe um, the largest investment in all of edX. So you have some of the photos below of the various teams involved. Um, you may recognize some of the folks in the larger photo on the bottom right. You can see uh, on the left closest to us, Sashka, who has been one of our videographers, a very young woman uh, who is just amazing. Uh, Alex, that is you next to her? That's Alex. Whoops. What happened here? Alex next to her. Um, there's Carlos. Um, I'm going to go around the table till I, uh, let's see, Claire from TLS, Adam from TLS, Frank, who is our um, amazing, amazing cameraman, um, site designer, everything. He's He's been at everything that was videotaped. Frank was here planning it, running it, etc. And none of this would have happened without him. And Anita, finally in the forefront with her ever wonderful smile um, that she kept on throughout the the grueling days of this planning. <laughs> Clelia, oh sorry, Clelia, there you are too. Clelia's on um, ad line with us now. Uh, sorry, I miss Clelia. And Andrash and Alex. So if we move the yeah, so that's Andrash. The, the two of them were um, uh, course assistants with Alex and then Alex Fuentes who masterfully um, survived us basically um, by by being behind the scenes and turning all of our material over onto the platform integrating it with panache um, and and like I said really um, surviving us <laughs> really you don't see nearly um, all the people who were heavily involved in this course but it became um, a family so there were 
little families within the bigger family, but there was one giant family that took this on. So as far as content went, we started the uh, to go from the cone model, we put in the stages of visioning, learning, and planning that went along with our original design that had the startup, the development, the prototype phase, and the scaling. And overlaid to that, we had to put the seven sessions we envisioned as well as the two live sessions, the second of which we're doing right now. So session one, as you saw in the earlier slide, had, had other names, um, various sessions did, but we went from engaging to co-creating to designing to bringing a live session in to see where people were to scaling, then finally to resourcing and assessing and then ending with the impact gallery which is up in session seven on the edX website and is amazing for those who haven't seen it and finally to our uh, our celebration day this is a big celebration day at McGill we have this live session followed by um, a reception where we expect the principal of the university the dean of the day Sotel faculty of management uh, many of the TLS people and other people who have been involved to be with us in the classroom this afternoon. Um, the human infrastructure for this program, which was a really <laughs> difficult, they're looking at me because we had a different format last night that we decided we didn't like. And to give you an idea of who interacted with whom and how many different um, levels and layers and um, groups with whom we had to communicate as the four co-designers and they had to communicate back to us and they had to communicate with each other and if I had the time and the space on the slide to have added double the amount of arrows I would have because people communicated not only with the names that came below them on this on this slide but with everyone around so the arrows are really meant to show this was not a circus, but <laughs> this was um, an amazing feat that we thought couldn't be done, but we did it. Um, the online community facilitators, this was another surprise for us and an amazing, amazing thing. We, we learned early on that the MOOC would go better if the, the those who were participating could get feedback from somebody but with the number of people who are going to register for this MOOC getting feedback from only the four co-designers one would be limiting and two would be impossible for, <laughs> for us to provide the kind of feedback that that would be necessary to keep people engaged to help to guide them and to steer them so we put out a call for volunteers and from that call we developed a team of 32 deeply engaged unpaid volunteers with hands-on experience in the plural sector and a vocation for learning collectively among them there are 16 languages represented and social change networks across 52 countries we had a room in the lower level of the day Tel faculty of management that we originally referred to as the war room but thought that sounded too militaristic so uh, I guess it became referred to as the group hub but meetings took place there and different people went to these meetings each week but these volunteers interacted with the teams they each had teams that were their specific teams so that the teams got used to one person guiding them and interacting with them and this was not something we could have envisioned happening from day one this was just amazing that these people were willing to give their time um, and their expertise and one of these facilitators is at, well Alex headed up the facilitators and one of them is also here so I'm gonna pass the microphone for a minute two of them oh I didn't see you Susan so Susan uh, Susan right and Deborah so pass it to you Alex and maybe the others would say a word the the piece that uh, that uh that really that that was important for me in, in working with the facility with the facilitation team was a recognition that uh, that okay 
Uh, so the 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 piece that uh, that was Im important in 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 my work with the facilitation team was a recognition of the extent to which this was a, a, a this was a learning exchange for ourselves as well. Uh, the facilitators um, were um, were there to to provide hands-on support to the learners, but we also walked with you through the process. We made sense. We picked it apart um, and. Uh, and in and of itself, we were a social initiative. Deb, you want to say a few words? Sure. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, came into the group. First, I was going to be a participant, and then I realized that they were looking for facilitators. I thought it would be a great way to learn. And it was indeed a great way to learn. I learned so much from the teams that uh, Luce and I were working with, I learned a lot from Luce. There's only 41 years difference in our age, so we had a lot to contribute to each other. And all in all, it's been an, a tremendous experience, and um, I hope that uh, impact comes um, sooner or later. So there you go. Yes, I also came in as a um, facilitator, and I found it was an extraordinary ex learning experience. It was a community and 11 intensive weeks where we um, interrelated related with each other, we learned from, from each other, we, um, we met in different sets at, at the hub, at, outside the, the university as well. We, um, we, we became very interested in, in what was happening with ourselves and with other people that were other people that were also participating in in a different way and looking at the same projects from a different perspective, which made made it a lot more richer and interesting for everyone. So I'm really happy with with my learnings and with having been part of this experience. It should also be said about Susan that she and three others um, were part of the live tapings, all six sessions, so you probably recognize her, along with Kika and Lucas and Jessica Shaw, and all four became um, online community facilitators. So they have basically lived this experience for nearly two years with us. <laughs> Merry Christmas, we could sing. Oh yeah, now we're just waiting for the uh, waiting for the slides to come back up, and as soon as you see them, um, I'll I'll start again. Okay, the social learning teams. Um, you can see on the map where these teams originated. We had 23 participants. We had many more who registered, and I'll get to that, but we had 23 active participants countries who, sorry, 2,300. What did I say? 23. Oh, 23. <laughs> well, we had more facilitators than 23. 2,300 participants from 165 countries. 150 teams were formed using the edX team tool mostly international teams, which also was just astounding and wonderful for us. Every team was assigned to a facilitator. Not sure what keeps happening, I must be touching it. Every, time, every team was assigned to a facilitator, and some facilitators in turn teamed up and teamed in their advising and their guiding to the, to the teams, using the team word a lot. Um, the teams held meetings for each session. They were given charges. A charge is something that we ask the teams to do as a team in addition to the individual work that they did in the, in the group. And these charges uh, were designed to advance their social initiatives. The teams that remained engaged use other platforms and communicate because they couldn't do everything they wanted to do on the edX platform. So a number of the teams were working on Facebook, Google Groups, Google Hangouts, Skype, Slack, WhatsApp, different blogs, some even meeting in person. 
So it depended on where the teams were, who was participating, what means were available to them, but many of them used more than one um, way to communicate with each other. So the, the we had a Grookathon last week. It was a nine-hour event. <laughs> it was an on-site event. We did it live uh, from the De Sotel Faculty of Management, not in this classroom. We had 16 teams who presented their initiatives and got feedback from us, from the facilitators, the co-designers, and from other teams who were listening online. Um, there were, that day, more than 270 people viewed the Grookathon. The Impact Gallery was going on at the same time. The Impact Gallery was our seventh session. So beginning December 2nd, teams were able to post summer videos, um, videos, photos. So 23 teams in the end shared their initiatives with the community. And this session is still up there. And it's my understanding that everyone registered for the course will be able to access this whenever going forward to come back and look. Even self won't be active. Um, social media. Um, we had the Facebook page where many of you um, were able to interact with each other and post comments and get feedback from the facilitators and um, and some of the faculty. There were tweets that went on about um, the group. Um, the Facebook having 670 members and I assume that there's going to be a co post group community at least on Facebook that will be organized by those who are uh, who are participating. Uh, we're going to say more about Group 2.0 going forward. There will be an afterlife. We just don't know what it will look like right now. Uh, media outreach. You can see the in the upper right. There's a photo of Henry, who is being interviewed. But there were uh, pieces in various. Um, parts of the media about the group. Um, some of the the places where the articles appeared or interviews appeared are listed on the left of the screen. But what was so interesting, I guess, for people is that one, this was a MOOC designed specifically for groups. Uh, it had a different name than usual MOOCs to convey that. It was um, a, an online course for McGill that was designed not from an already existing course, but designed from the ground up as a new online venture, and that was new. So it did get a lot of media attention. People were interested in what we were doing, how we were doing it, how we got all the volunteers, how we're managing teams online, how we're able to provide feedback, and so on. Uh, there were conference presentations. Um, Anita did some of these, Carlos did some of these, Clelia did at least one, uh, so, so some of the facilitators were doing these. These were conferences where the those who presented talked social learning can happen, how we are doing this MOOC to address that, um, how we're able or how we were trying to bring the pedagogy to the internet and so on. And I don't think the conferences um, have stopped. I think those who are involved on the learning end, the facilitating end, are going to keep participating. And I think the word about the MOOC will hopefully um, keep going out there and staying on. So, wow, these are lessons learned. What did we learn? We learned so many things, and we don't want to put an entire slideshow up about them. There are too many. But these are some of the important learnings. Uh, we learned that online students can form meaningful learning relationships on an international basis. We certainly knew that could happen in the classroom because it's been happening in our IMPM and IMHL programs. Um, we learned that students want to have direct access to anyone involved in the course. Their professors, other experts, mentors, other students, mentors representing the facilitators, uh, and the facilitators, many of whom are experts in these areas as well. We learned that students like practitioners 
as much as they liked the professors. So the practitioner videos were as popular and even more so in some instances as the conceptual ones. We learned that a practice-driven experience is more organic than a content-driven experience. Um, we had a lot of learnings about the technological platform that really is required for what we wanted to do. So some of what we wanted to do was possible in the platform and other things were not possible and hence the, um, the outside Facebook and, and Google Hangouts and the like to carry on the communication. We also learned that building a uh, technology human structure that mobilizes knowledge is just as important as creating great content. The two have to go together. And I think, uh, finally, we learned that we can't stop here. So we have a responsibility to move this forward and to, um, to, to allow the groups that started to have a forum where they can continue and for this pedagogy to be shared with um, more people than we were even able to share it with this time. We have uh, a picture here and a message that will follow from Henry. And so you know that our design team, again, was Henry, Carlos, Anita, and me. The four of us were in this absolutely from the get-go, from, from the start. The MOOC, uh, in <clears throat> many ways, was based on um, the ideas in Henry's book, Rebalancing Society. and we're all joyous. We saw it through. We did it. We're bringing it to a conclusion. And at the same time, we're really sad that Henry isn't sitting here with us today because last Saturday morning he had coronary bypass surgery. He's doing very well, various family members report. So it's only three, four days post-surgery. He's likely to come home this weekend, we're hoping. And he has sent a message. Frank is going to play it. The message, this was taped Friday evening and his surgery was early. Yeah, it's embedded in the slide. I'm going to be in much shape when you were having the goodbye party, but uh, I love this group and I love what you all did. And I just huge progress. I don't think we've solved it, but I think what we've done is open the door to enthusiastic and I love the whole thing and I thank you all for participating and I want to get well soon so that we can do 2.0 and kind of do the next one with a lot of new ideas that we learned from you guys. So thank you. Would, would, would it be possible to uh, play that again with a little more, more volume? So we're going, th this is being um, videoed, so we are going to put this presentation online, the video as a separate video to the um, edX website, but we can play it again. Okay, we'll play it again and hold the microphone up. It's, it's a little bit of uh, jerry-rigged in this classroom. You can mute, can you mute one of the uh, microphones? I've known before. So, Did and I just I think we've made huge progress. I, I don't think we've solved the problems, but I think what we've done is open the door to the idea of a group beyond the MOOC that we really are starting to understand what it means to organize 
for groups and how to change things in the world accordingly. So I am super enthusiastic and I love the whole thing and I thank you all for participating and I want to get well soon so that we can do 2.0 and kind of do the next one with a lot of new ideas that we learned from you guys. So thank you. Wish you were in recovery. So um, thanks for being here, and I'm going to turn the microphone back to Anita. That's the end of this part of our live session. Great. Uh, we have another special uh, video to show you in a um, before we turn it over to the video, um, I would love to hear from our three um, participants on this online forum. So uh, how about we start with Alan? We'll go from left to right, that, or at least on my screen it looks like that. So Alan, do you have a few thoughts? Uh, I guess there were like a, a couple of uh, questions that we were supposed to address. Um, I think how, how was our experience was one of them, and uh, what about going forward uh, was another one. Uh, I think this was a great, great experience. I think most of us have made a lot of contacts outside, well, within the group that will continue outside of the uh, group. Even, even if we don't continue the specific work, I think we've made contacts that will keep for a long time. I, I think another thing is the, the, the teams that, are, that uh, uh, launch projects, I think that a lot of these are important projects that will continue. I think that, that was a great thing. And, uh, and I think that... Um, Going forward for the teams, um, I think that we have to, uh, we've been thinking about uh, how to continue communication among the teams. I think the, the Gookathon was a great, great experience that gave the team uh, members a chance to make suggestions across team boundaries. And I think that's something that um, I would like to continue. I think a lot of others would like to continue. I mean, besides continuing our own teams, but to, to, continue, to continue the conversations, the, the suggestions across, across teams. Um, I know that Marina has, has suggested a uh, social network for social, uh, social impact uh, platform. Um, uh, Andres had, had, had suggested that we uh, proceed um, uh, before waiting for the perfect platform to come into play. I would suggest Facebook, as other people have been suggesting, the Facebook group, uh, the group Facebook, for one. And also, um, uh, Carlos posted the two videos from the Groupathon. And um, with that, that, that's a place to start. Um, Alan, I can I interrupt you for a second? I'm so sorry. I think what we're going to do, because um, we catch about a half or a little bit more than half of what you say, but it's always in and out, so we catch you as incomplete sentences. I'm sure that you've got some notes jotted. If you could send them to us as bullets, what we'll do is we'll put them as overlays onto this video so that people can read your comments, because it's very difficult to, to follow, sure. um, even though we're, 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 we're working on the mind reading. Um, <laughs> so let's try Clelia in France. The technology and, and audio is better. Clelia, do you have a few thoughts? Can you hear me? Is it working now? I can hear you. Anita, can you hear me in the room? No, it's not good. We're hearing echoes. Um, can you speak in two really quick sentences to see whether... Or... Okay, uh, I can try. Can you hear anything now? So one of the big things that was already previously said by the facilitators is really the community of learners and facilitators that were here during the experience. I think that was a big plus. Can you hear? Yeah, it's about 80%, so it's touch and go. OK. Uh, should I continue, or should I send you bullet points? Continue, but try to speak um, quickly without pauses. Okay, so um, that was really good because it really connected a lot of like-minded people and um, it really created a big family as was mentioned before, so I think that was a very good um, experience that really enhanced the social learning. As for the future, I see a lot of implications that the GOOC, that what we discovered with the GOOC and the power of social learning, not only in online courses but also for education or 
uh, public policy and how the cities and governments or companies um, even could use this social learning and citizens engagement to really bring into bring in into their activities uh, what people are thinking and what people want and create something um, a common learning and common um, outcome for from everyone and building something together. So I think that was a big plus and it can be used in many different um, projects. Thank you, Clelia. Garson, can you hear us? Um, Aha, from Afghanistan. Do you want to weigh in on your thoughts? It looks your mic like is muted right now, so if you unmute your mic, it will be helpful for us to hear you. Yeah. Good okay. job. Now fine? Yes. Okay. So, start. Yes, please. Okay. Yes. Uh, so, uh, yeah, in fact, uh, this uh, social uh, learning program, it was a push for me because uh, I, I had just joined Women to Women Leadership Conference and uh, we were implementing projects. Uh, so, so, uh, so uh, it was a really a push for us how to go for so uh, how to go for such programs, like how to implement such projects and it really helped us a lot. And, in, in, in during uh, a very uh, like a uh, small amount of time we we uh, gained a lot uh, like uh, we have uh, um, uh, created uh, some of the projects that we have uh, come up with some of the, some of the projects that uh, if we go for them if we implement them in a way so it might be helpful uh, like for uh, uh, not only for Kabul but for other provinces um, but we, but we have started it from anyway, and it was like a super awesome experience for me. Uh, in fact, uh, the um, experience in the uh, like uh, how this uh, social learning program uh, it could be used in many different ways, and uh, like uh, it's helpful for everyone. It's helpful for different organizations, and they can use it. Uh, so um, yeah, well, like like the way you were explaining things, and the way we were like uh, li listening to the facilitators in their words. So so we learned a lot, and um, it could be implemented in different ways. And and if social learning programs like they they go further, uh, it will be helpful for for many people. Thank you so much, and we've been so delighted to meet all of your group members in Afghanistan who all speak English so beautifully. Uh, we also have Julie on the line who is in Turkey and was working on a initiative um, that brought mobile schools to refugee camps uh, for Syrians. Um, Julie, are you still there? I'm here, but having trouble hearing you. How are you? Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. You can hear me? Yes. Oh, I can't hear you much, but anyway, we'll have a one-sided conversation then. Okay, so you can go ahead and speak if you'd like. Okay, well, um, i just like to um, say that, I mean, I found the, the social learning platform really useful in um, giving me a kind of starting point and, uh, yeah, and kind of guiding me along the way what to do at certain stages in the project when I got stuck. Um, we have a pretty small team, so um, a lot of the time it was me, you know, the project was uh, started fairly quickly. We, we started the school within a month of starting the, to plan the project. And um, at that point we had a lot of input from Canavar, who was a member of the team, but he's had to leave Iraq now. So it's been quite difficult because, you know, half well, a third of the team has gone. Um, Nelly was helping us a lot um, and also helping Canavar. But, you know, at the moment there's me and Sophia is, is helping with, with PR and kind of for the next stage. Um, but one of the things that's held us back is the fact that we're a very small team. Um, when, at the end of the Gruchathon, um, I noticed that a lot of people were saying they felt isolated at certain times during the project. And 
um, Carlos was talking about um, it would be great to have a kind of hub for various teams um, from the Grooch to continue um, to check in with each other and I think it would be great at the end of this project for me if the Grooch continue in that um, we could keep in touch and maybe uh, I'm, I'm kind of thinking about trying to set up a website at the moment that would be a hub for people creating teams like this and projects like this that they could check in and perhaps in the long term we could provide various um, information and various kind of routes on these kind of projects you know when you get stuck you could go to plan B or you could go to plan C or whatever so but I mean that's just very much uh, an idea at the moment and uh, maybe you some you saw the post on Facebook about having a kind of webinar um, I call it a Java webinar just checking in you know where people are what they need to do and what the next stage is so I don't know what what do you think of that that's my question to to you guys well, certainly, um, we're going to take a little bit of a break. It is the holiday season over here, but uh, 2016 will certainly um, be a revival of conversations around Grook and how it may live on in a new form and how we can support you. Um, we are going to end uh, this live session with a video. Um, it basically showcases, um, you know, the, the evolution of the Grook and who was involved and how it um, unfolded. And certainly, uh, you know, with all the planning and love that went into the group, it couldn't have been a success without participants like you uh, joining us. Challenge of working on a social initiative and collaborating together, despite whatever, um, uh, whatever geographical distance or time zone difference or technological uh, d um, challenges there were. Um, we really, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you. Um, you've been part of a very special pilot around social learning online that I believe has a lot of potential, and everyone in the room um, and everyone online right now believes in the potential, so um, we're just getting started. So thank you, and uh, we will watch the video. Great. Oh, hmm? oh weird. So we have to turn off some cameras here and do some technical stuff. Just stick with us. Okay. To mute. Could you mute your um, mics in the meantime? Yeah. And um, well, we are we're, we're we work on this video for um, as the last video as a closing video for for the course. So uh, we're going to put it on the platform, but we were also wanted to show it to you live. So. You're gonna see that the image and the audio are gonna be a little bit uh, late or lag, but just just be patient with that. We just wanted to show it now. You have an you have an idea, and then you can come back to that video later. Um, so Frank, uh, whenever you're ready. Not a problem. Just on the camera. Stay with us. The video is coming. Yeah. Yeah. yeah now I can see it. Yeah. You did it, Frank. Yeah, but if I go in the video. No, don't. Works. Yeah. Yeah. 2014, I published a pamphlet. A friend read it. Her name is Irene. And her reaction was quite interesting to me because she said, you know, I knew these kinds of things were happening, but I never knew it was that bad. And then she asked the question that so many people have asked me ever since, what can I do about it? When Irene asked, 
I thought, you know, there's so many ways in which everybody can get involved, either by joining something they can see or by creating something new and addressing some problem that they really care about and getting colleagues, friends, family to work with it. Do something about it. Start something that's going to make a huge difference in your life and the life of other people and the life of this planet. We began our group journey more than and we have a backstory worth telling. Henry Minsberg and Leslie Breiner have been using a unique pedagogy in two graduate programs at McGill for several years now. They call it social learning. Put simply, social learning is happening when people share their experience with each other in small groups or teams. Around the same time that Henry was working on his book, Rebalancing Society, and contemplating the Irene question, Carlos Rueda, who had also been teaching in the IMHL, the International Masters for Health Leadership program, was on a university advisory committee, exploring how McGill could enter the online education world of MOOCs. Long story short, teaching and learning services from McGill University was given the mandate to collaborate with the edX consortium to produce several massive open online courses, otherwise known as MOOCs. And they took the risk of producing the world's first ever group, a MOOC for groups. We designed and produced social learning for social impact to achieve two goals. First, we wanted to explore if and how social learning could take place within an online context. Second, we wanted to inspire groups of people from around the world to collaborate on social initiatives in an attempt to rebalance society. The trio of group co-designers grew to four when Anita Novak, who had been teaching social entrepreneurship and social innovation, joined the team. Together, this group spent hundreds of hours co-creating the course. It's also estimated that we consume over 50 pounds of chocolate together. <laughs> After many rounds of iteration, we designed the group as a course with six sessions of content one impact gallery, and two live sessions. We invited more than 50 social sector actors to attend the live tapings of the six content sessions, and there was never a dull moment to be found. Engaging was devoted to establishing a group community. Co-creating was intended to inspire high-functioning teams. Designing was dedicated to learning one's way to a prototype. Scaling address how to increase social impact. Resourcing was devoted to finding resources to help sustain social initiatives. Assessing, explore when and how to measure social impact. We brought the group content to life through the passion and expertise of 19 guest speakers. These speakers included academics, activists, community organizers, social entrepreneurs, and philanthropists and they were working on issues such as poverty reduction, women's empowerment, education, health care, food security, climate change, and social inclusion. The course content was also complemented by deep dives interviews with rural sector actors and leaders who all had provocative and inspiring ideas to share. I don't know anybody who doesn't want to do good better. And if you have ideas that you think are important, do not take no things. What keeps me going is being involved in organizations like this, because I can taste the future. What is the barrier in our belief system that is preventing us from achieving this vision that we want? Dissatisfaction with a problem is not enough to motivate action on it. It takes hope. You will come up with something that will work, and finally you will change the world. Of course, none of the content would have been disseminated to the world via edX were it not for the heavy lifting done behind the scenes at TLS. Videographers edited hundreds of hours of footage into many lectures. Activities and group charges were developed by instructional designers. Masterful software aficionados integrated the material onto the platform. And three teaching assistants ensured that the user experience was positive. After the course content was filmed and edited, the self-described group as Why Not Co-Creator decided to take on another challenge, the creation of a brigade of online community facilitators. Typically, MOOCs are self-directed courses with very little feedback, but recognizing that social learning requires a high level of engagement between online learners, the group co-designed team wanted to provide support. 
we put out a call for online community facilitators, and to our surprise, 32 volunteers stepped up to this task. Collectively, the facilitators speak 16 languages, and they're connected to social change networks across 52 countries. On September 16, 2015, Social Learning for Social Impact went live. And that's when the party really began. Learners from every corner of the planet joined the course and formed teams across 10 broad categories, including peace and conflict, children and youth, human rights and environment. The 11th category, called unconventional cross topic, was created in response to Henry's subversive call not to box people into categories. And of course, that turned out to be the most popular choice. Be subversive. When you're doing your social initiatives, be subversive. No social initiative succeeds without some degree of, of subversiveness. We invited the learners to complete individual work, which meant they needed to watch many lectures, complete activities such as polls, personal reflections, and posting these reflections and discussions to a forum. At the end of every session, we invited these teams to collaborate on a group charge designed to maximize social learning and advance their social initiatives. So how did the course play out in the real world? Well, first of all, we know our group is on to something with an emphasis on social learning. Our participants were active in an online forum, some groups held regular Google Hangout meetings, and over 600 people became members of our Facebook group, posting links and videos. To be honest, we were surprised by all the unexpected ways our participants and collaborated. We also provided special opportunities for the group community to come together synchronously. We held two live sessions, bridging geographical divides, and heard from participants in the Philippines, Afghanistan, the United States, and Spain, and Turkey. We also hosted two groupathons, the second of which spanned nine consecutive hours to accommodate groups from different time zones. This event gave groups with fairly developed social initiatives a chance to share their progress and future plans and get real-time feedback from the co-design team, several online facilitators, and fellow social learners. As for social impact, well that's an interesting issue. At various stages of the group development, we asked ourselves how would we know if the course was a success? Henry often used to say, if only one social initiative grew to become the next Grameen Bank or Khan Academy, then we'll have succeeded. I guess time will tell. In the meantime, here are some of the projects that are in development. A mobile school in a Syrian refugee camp was created thanks to a group of participants who mobilized to tackle the logistical challenges and raise funds to scale operations. Another group composed of members from four different countries created a web platform to unite people and organizations who are addressing the issue of unemployment. The Climate Pledge was created by a group to encourage Westerners to pledge reductions in our carbon footprints as a means of slowing global warming. And finally, there was a group of Americans and Afghans who collaborated on creating harmony in Afghanistan. And the list goes on. At the end of this two-year journey, all the co-design team is grateful for the experience. We had the chance to work with professionals in teaching and learning services and work with people from around social initiatives to rebalance society. But one thing for certain is we couldn't have done it without the support and contributions of so many people. So from the bottom of our hearts, thank you, and we hope to see you for Group 2.0.
Oh, the three of us. Hi. Hi. Hello. So, um, <laughs> wow, it's uh, it's almost it's it's impressive to see uh, the work that all these people have done in a half. Um, well, let me just uh, we we just wanted to say a few word a few last words uh, the three of us. Um, so here, um, I would just to share that uh, my my final reflection for the group. Um, we actually wanted to create a culture, um, create a culture of social learning and create a culture of social change, and uh, we wanted to to bring to the online world a culture that change is possible, that you can learn from doing, that you don't have to wait to finish your studies to actually give some good to the world, that you can learn as much as from your peer, that you can learn from your professors. And then you can connect around the world to actually make change um, in your local communities. And that you can actually use the internet, uh, not just for day-to-day um, -day, uh, relationships, but actually to the internet can become a tool for, for social good. So all that culture we wanted to build in this course, and I think uh, we, we, we are almost there. And, uh, and it was a great experience, and hopefully in the next iterations, it will become even more clear that how can we deliver social learning and social impact um, for the world. Uh, so I'm probably repeating myself a bit, but the culmination of this group um, is a bit bittersweet for me because uh, Henry's not here to share the end of it with us. Um, he's here in spirit, uh, he'll be back for 2.0, but uh, as we met as a team of three in the last couple of days to put the final touches on the course, I realized what a loss um, not having him here with us at the table. And it says something to the experience itself, our experience and our social initiative, because our social initiative was this group. So we, and instead of being 13 weeks or 14 weeks, ours was two and a half years. It was an incredible experience, and I think one of the things that made it so valuable for me is that we were four really different people who came together with different areas of focus, different priorities for the group, different things that were important to each of us, and we never had an argument, we never had a short word among between us that I can recall. We did have a lot of chocolate. <laughs> um, and we had a huge amount of fun. We laughed. We have groupisms. We rec recorded, but which I cannot repeat here. Most of which I can't repeat here. Um, sayings that some of us came up with just inadvertently. It was a huge amount of fun, and I think we did a um, put our best effort forth at creating the community Carlos spoke of, bringing content to the course because. I was adamant that this we had to have content. We had to have things people could take away, frameworks, models, things that could be used. So hopefully we provided that for you. And again, I look forward to 2.0. Just before we came into the live session, I asked Leslie whether or not she thought she was going to cry today. And she said, I don't know. And I, I said, I think I will. So apologies if it starts now. Um, you know, I find working at an institution like McGill, which has 35,000 students and 5,000 faculty and staff, can be a really big organization where sometimes we can complain about bureaucracy or all sorts of different things. When I think about the purpose of McGill University uh, in the community in Canada and universities writ large around the world, it's to uh, advance knowledge for the betterment of society. And I think that McGill University took a really big risk by choosing this MOOC because in so many ways we were pushing the envelope um, and, and that's why it took as long as it did, cost as much as it did, but I think the idea of social learning and where education can go in the future, um, we've just, you know, we're just tipping, we're just touching the tip of the iceberg and it feels so exciting to have been part of a project. They say that 
if you do something you love, you never work a day in your life. So it feels like I've I've basically been unemployed for two years, not working, um, just enjoying this experience. And for me, also on a personal level. Um, I am profoundly moved by people who are contributing to positive, sustainable social change in the world. And to know that the material that we pr put out um, provided opportunities for people around the world to come together, have conversations about meaningful change, is so deeply, deeply satisfying and gratifying. There's so much news in the world um, that could bring us down and make us feel defeated and make us feel pessimistic. But there are millions of people um, represented by the thousands of people who join this MOOC who are contributing to the rebalancing of society that um, Henry is advocating. And for that, I'm eternally grateful and um, just want to thank everyone. I actually want to say one last word. N none of the people we thanked, um, e except maybe some of the staff because it's part of their job. Nobody was paid to do this MOOC. None of the speakers were paid. None of the facilitators uh, were paid. None of the design team uh, were paid. And we had speakers who came in here from Harvard University, from Washington DC, from the University of Washington, Seattle, from people who came for, for deep dives from all over the place. Nobody got a paycheck or an honorarium for doing this. People did it because they wanted to do it. Bye. Group hug. Group hug. Uh, We're channeling positive energy for Henry's and we fast made a baby. recovery. <laughs> we made a baby. <laughs> no, see you soon.